Despite the several measures put in place by the Nigerian government, kidnapping has continued to be prevalent all over the country. At the plenary last Tuesday, the Senate passed for a second reading a bill proposing life imprisonment for the office or for the offence, I beg your pardon, of kidnapping or any form of abduction, wrongful restraint and confinement. The bill seeks to introduce stiffer punishments and punitive measures to combat and prevent kidnapping in Nigeria. Joining us to discuss this are legal practitioners Tunji Abdulhamid and Ngozi Akandu. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here. Tonight we've had Thank so many you. lawyers on the show, so it's interesting. I'm going to start with you, by Akandu. A lot of people are wondering what, the, what this particular bill would change in the scheme of things. And I'd just like to let you know that states also have some form of anti-kidnapping um, you know, bills, uh, or rather acts and, and laws that already somewhat are tailored to deal with the issue of abductions and kidnappings. So what, the first question is, what difference would this particular bill, if it becomes law, make? To be honest with you, I do not expect much difference to be made, especially in the aspect of um, availability of laws or acts you know, to take care of the problem of kidnap, terrorism, and so, and so on and so forth in Nigeria. Uh, much difference would not be made because we already have a lot of laws, a lot of acts, you know, that, you know, have to do with this particular problem in the country. The only way or aspect where we would expect something to, you know, change might be the angle of enforcement. If only um, enforcement can, you know, become more, more um, pursued and with respect to these situations in the country, I think the expected change you know, would have taken place. If the enforcements are not enhanced or made better than they have been in the past few years, then I don't think any difference should be expected. Mm. Um, Vice Abdul, Abdul, Abdul Hamid, um, let, let's look at the states and, and the laws that they have. Now, we know that Anambra Inugu Abia or your um, Cross River, Edo, Bielsa, um, Bochi states, Eboing, they already have, um, you know, anti-kidnapping bills. Um, at the state level, since 2008, many of these state governments have already um, introduced their own anti-kidnapping laws in an attempt to combat the crimes. But looking at what this bill, which is, has gone past its second reading on the floor of the National Assembly, is um, seeking to do, it wants to eliminate the present time frame for reporting and prosecuting defilement cases in Nigeria, as well as remove gender restrictions on the offense of rape by further educating on propensity of rape on both male and female victims. Now, this is um, one of the bills that is going to be under um, this anti-kidnapping, and that's mostly for rape. Um, according to the senator that, had, that, that pushed for this, um, he's also saying that um, because this is a major security challenge across the country as we speak, um, he's also pushing... Um, that the, the punishment that used to be, they call it light. They're saying they want it to be stiffer for those who are kidnapping. But I still ask the same question. Can the ones that we already have not be amended instead of rewriting a new one and making it law? Uh, I, I think uh, they are not writing a new one. They are amending the current uh, criminal code act. That is the position there. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you is that, look, we have a criminal code, we have penal code. The criminal code applies only to the, in the southern part of the country, while the penal code applies only in another, another part of the country. Mm -hmm. So what is being amended, the proposed amendment now only relates to the criminal code as, as, as the southern part of the country, not uh -huh. in the entire country. So the, the law, as it is now, it, it will only affect the southern uh, uh, states. I, I think uh, the proposed amendment in those uh, in that bill is an uh, important uh, uh, amendment, but I am of I am of the few that that amendment or even a new one cannot cure the problem on ground because our problem is not about uh, a lack of law. We have so many laws, just like my colleague said. But, but we, we haven't seen uh, we haven't seen many prosecutions in terms of these abductions. Uh, let's start by the very famous kidnapper in Nigeria, Evans, where is he? Where's his case? 
So maybe that's also that, part of the problem. That is exactly where I'm going to now. That the, 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 the problem is not about law. We, we don't lack law. We lack enforcement. That's our problem. So even if you have a law that, that now brings a death sentence and a life imprisonment or whatever, it may not even change anything. Because we have law already on grant that we're getting a death sentence in terms of a arm robbery and the, a, a, the murder. People are still killing people. Well, see, so you see, the, the problem we have in this country is about enforcement. We don't enforce our law. We don't punish people for, for the crime committed. I'm sorry, I want and to disagree with you a little bit. Enforcement be wait, Evans has been arrested. He's in custody. He should be having his day in court. In fact, by now, it's taken years. By now, shouldn't he have been sentenced? So should we be saying that the problem is with the judiciary system? Or, or Because I don't know if we can place this at the foot of the, the police, who are the law enforcers. They have done their part. They've done their beat. Every single Nigerian was holding on to that string of hope that when Evans is made to hang, and I'm using the word hang loosely here, um, it might have set, set, set some precedence or become some form of deterrent for whoever, who, whoever wants to go in that way. But we're seeing more and more of these abductions because someone like Evans is still yet to have his day and justice is yet to have its course. You are agreeing with me. Uh, maybe, yeah. I'm agreeing with that's you. What, that's what I'm saying. There's, there's no enforcement. If the enforcement is, is slow, even where there is. And we're even talking about Evan. Is the only Evan that we have? People in the north that are, are, are kidnapping students uh, and uh, whatever. I mean, I've been arrested. I mean, I've been, I've been prosecuted. We have so many of them. I mean, what, are, what, what they are doing is you not know, kidnapping those who have been carrying the, our, our school children and all, and, all, and, all, and all those. That is the kidnapping. I mean, I've been arrested. I mean, I've been abusing. I mean, I've been, I've been paraded. We have been told by the ministers and the, that they will not be, they will not be, they will not declare their names. But they are declaring the names of those who are debt, indebted, who are corrupt. The, the law is there that they, 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 they remember the law that the law says you cannot uh, uh, publish names because they have not been uh, uh, convicted. But in terms of a uh, kidnapping, uh, those who have been kidnapping in the north, uh, in the other part of the country, they said they will keep their name to their chest. You see, that's why we are having the problems. Mm. The problem is that we, those who are in charge, are not enforcing the law the way it should be enforced. They are not taking legal uh, proper action in terms of punishing people who have been committing crime. That's why people are being encouraged to do more. So the issue is not a bad law. If you like, go and do a, a, a law every day and they make it a death sentence every day, nobody will, it will not change anything if you don't have the, the, the will to enforce the law. So what the problem is about enforcing the law. So the changing of the law, not, like I said, the proposed amendment in Tamil is very important. Because in, 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 in development and trade patterns, we have time limits, which are first sometimes from people, prevent from people from uh, bringing out a case after a, after a while. Yeah, it's very important. But notwithstanding that, that, is, that will not change much in the terms of uh, uh, kidnapping in this country because we are not dealing with those who are kidnapping. We are sitting there with levity. We are even considering uh, amnesty for people who have been kidnapping people and who have been killing people. So sad. So we, I, I don't have any hope that, that that will cure anything. Let me go back to Baisa Khan. Baisa Khan, you want to come in? Yeah, go ahead. Something slightly. Yes. yes I, want, I want to add slightly to the Evans um, example. You know, I think the Evans situation is a, is a portrayal of a, the enforcement problem we have in this country. We begin to look into these things or, you know, begin to concentrate on a particular case when uh, suddenly it becomes sensational, it becomes more public, too public to be ignored. That is what the Evans case has shown to us. We, we come down, we, set, we, 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 we become silent, we settle down, we become um, like a bicycle to enforcement of all these laws and all these acts until something very sensational happens. Then you see them begin to make noise all over the place. It is not as if we don't have a plethora of you know, instances where kidnaps and you know, all these um, uh, crimes are taking place. But it's just that when somebody becomes unlucky, unlucky enough to become, become come into the eye of the public, you see it becomes sensational. The noise is being made all over the country. Uh, the, the, this goes to show the problem of enforcement we have in this country. We don't enforce laws until something goes out of hand and becomes a, a public knowledge. Then you see the whole world becoming you know, aware of it, and then we can't run away from it. That um, is what the advanced thing has shown to us. To borrow your own words, get out of hand. The number of abductions and even kill deaths that have resulted from these abductions, have they not gotten out of hand? And the question I wanted to ask you before you chimed in on the issue um, that uh, Abdul Hamid raised, what do you think the challenge is in terms of enforcement? 
Is it lack of expertise? Is it brain drain? Is it, what exactly could it be? Because we have our police, we have the soldiers, we have the joint um, task force. These people are all working together to rid us of these bandits and, and abductions and kidnappings. But what do you think the challenge is? Because one minute, um, we see a Shegumi going into where these bandits are, having meetings with them. And now we even hear that some security personnel um, you know, accompany him. But then we hear that we cannot find these bandits. We do, we do not know where they are. So I really do not know what is the challenge, really, with the enforcement and making sure that these people are brought to justice. You see, it, it is not difficult to throw away the possibility of compromise and things like this. You know, there have been suggestions all over the place of, you know, people gaining from what is going on. You know, even though we, we may not be able to point hands at, at one or two persons, but they, they have been, in, in the past few weeks, there have been ex expositions of, you know, names of people who are one way or the other connected with, uh, you know, these bandits, one way or the other connected with their activities. And you see uh, the, the, the federal government not, you know, playing to our expectation of bringing these people to book. It, it raises questions of complicity. You know, when you expect the federal government to do something, they appear to not be that serious. I read in the Guardian newspaper a few days ago um, how the... the uh, I think we're having connection issues uh, with Barisal Kandu there, so I'm going to toss it back to yes. Abdulhamid. Are you with me? Okay, you're back. Great. Go ahead. We lost you for yes, a second. I, 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 we have an instance of a few days ago. I think I read... Oh, dear. The connection is off no, again. I say some of some... Uh, are we still having the connection issue? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. We had an instance a few days ago. I was reading the Guardian newspaper where... Um, uh, and some other lawyers, you know, who are my friends. We are talking about, you know, how the federal government is being slow in um, prosecuting uh, terror suspects, even though the federal government a few months ago, before the judicial um, worker strike, said that it was only the judicial worker strike that is holding them back or delaying them from such prosecution. Now, the strike has been over for over two, three months. We still haven't had anything from you know, the federal government. It, it goes to show that, you know, sometimes you begin to ask questions. Is it that we are not interested in getting um, these people prosecuted or there is something we are missing? There was also this instance of... Um, Do we have to wait the for US the federal or... government? I, I, look at me as a greenhorn now. Do we have to yes. wait for the federal government to prosecute these said people? Because it's out there. Um, there is a list of people, even though the federal government is saying they're not interested in naming and shaming, but I remember vividly where the AGF said that they're more interested in bringing them to justice. So even if there is no public naming and shaming, if these names are with the, take for example, the attorney general, can people who are through the FOI or something not get that information so that these people can be prosecuted? Again, look at me as a greenhorn. I do not understand the processes, but maybe you can help us. Yes. The, the, the process of criminal um, justice or prosecution, you know, starts with the um, preferment of charges against suspects. And only the attorney general of the federation or the, the um, uh, attorney general of the state has this power to commence prosecution procedure or somebody to, to whom a fiat to commence or proceed with such prosecution is given or awarded. Without those things happening, without the Attorney General of the, uh, of the Federation commencing this procedure, it cannot happen. And then he knows he has he or the, the Attorney Generals of the or Attorneys General of the states know they have such these powers, which they can exercise or, or refuse or fail to exercise. So the, the, the powers they have are so strong and almost absolute that if they sit and say, we will not prosecute, nothing happens. And they, they have the law to back them up, you know, in, in that line of thought, in that line of action. So they can decide not to prosecute and nothing can happen. That is why we are looking up to them, looking onto them, say, do this which the law says you must do. 
Why are you not doing it? You made a promise that you're going to do this. You have not done it yet. But he has been promising. I think there was a, there was an interview he granted recently where he said that modalities are being put in place to make sure that these things you know, take place, uh, these prosecutions commence and conclude the way they were expected to. But we still haven't seen anything yet. That is why these lawyers, we all have been complaining. Why the delay? Why are you not prosecuting these people? Mm. That's the challenge we are having. Finally, um, Tunji, in, and in, in the absence of them not doing this, or if they decide not to, or they do not follow through, as we have seen many times, um, what then happens? Because we're all, on the one hand, trying to put an end to the abductions. We're trying to put an end to banditry. We're trying to make sure that people leave safely in this country and we can go about our businesses. As, we, as you can see, as we all know, um, there's trickling effects of this banditry and the abductions and the kidnappings. Uh, we're having issues of food shortages. We're having problems with food tr uh, and, and traders traveling from one part of the country to the other. Uh, there seems to be some form of chaos and it's going to have more and more trickling effects. Governors have decided in the southern part of the country that there will not be open grazing again. So that's also an issue. Measures are being taken. But if all of this does not happen, like he has said, if the AGF um, does not, one way or the other, make sure that these prosecutions take place, what then do we do? There's nothing you can do. The only person that can prosecute is the AG. And if he has the right to determine who to prosecute or who not to prosecute, and when to prosecute and when not to prosecute. It is a responsibility. Well, we, can, we can do something, but we can, we can protest. We can raise issue. We can, we, can, we can make it public and let people know what is going on in the country about non-prosecution of the people who have been killing people. Okay. You see, we are not... The, the, my problem, the, what we, the problem we are having is that there is no political way on the part of the, of, of the government. There is no political way. A situation whereby you see the government defending those who have been uh, uh, called bandits, who have been kidnapping people. They are they are they are giving excuses for this for reason why they are doing what they are doing. They are they are trying to bring them back to the society by what they call it. They say the amnesty or whatever. They are reinstating re re them into the into society. That is not the way to go. You see, when we now talk about only uh, in fact, it's unfair on Evan for him to be in custody now to be even facing trial. When we have people bandits who are killing people up, up and down, I, I'm not aware that they would uh, 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 Evan was alleged to have killed anybody. These people are, being, are killing people and they are, they, are, they, are, they are kidnapping without any fear of, it or, or, of anything. And they are, they are still there. So the issue we are having is there is no political way to punish for, for crime. The sentiment of ethnic sentiment and other sentiments are, 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 are reclaiming our, 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 not allowing us to do what we are supposed to do. So the what? issue is until we have people or in government who will do things without fear or favor. That's where we can get it done. If you like, go and do law. Okay. Well, we have to go. Uh, I wonder how many more people have to die for us to find that political will within our governments. But I want to say thank you, Ngozi Akandu and Tunji Abdulhamid, both legal practitioners. Thank you for being part of the conversation. It's always a pleasure. All right. Thank you. We will take a short break now to see what Nigerians have to say about the new anti-kidnapping law. In Nigeria, stay with us. And when we come back, I'll be giving you my goodbyes. Due to the fact that there have been high rate of kidnapping, and people are going to extort money from other individuals trying to struggle up and actually make themselves for a living. So I think getting kidnapping laws will actually reduce it. Yeah, I think we need it um, to curtail the insecurity issue because most people are turning the um, kidnapping into a huge business right now, coupled with what's happening with the, you know, uh, Fulani headsmen. They are going crazy about that. Not only them, other parts of the country, there are serious insecurity issues in the West, in the East, in the South, and in the North. So I think we, sh we, sh we need to have anti-security law to penalize every kidnapper. Sure, sure, but... There is an existing law now. Kidnapping is a capital offense. There is an existing law. Unless you want to... Now that it's very rampant, they can uh, review it and then increase the punishment. Surely we need it. And let government look into unemployment. You see, the problem in Nigeria is not laws. It's the willingness and the political will to carry out the law. I can give you an assurance that if these laws are passed today, they'll still mess it up. It may, not, it, may not, it, may not, it may not be effective. So the most important thing, do have the willingness to 
implemented law. Just two days ago, the Taliban government in Afghanistan executed kidnappers. But what do you see in Nigeria? We give them amnesty, integrate them to the uh, national security forces. Is that how to go? So I'm giving assurance that even if these laws are passed today, it may not be effective. If you don't have the political willingness, sincerity, the temerity to forge ahead and make sure that it's implemented. Let's hopefully, let's hope rather, that our government will find that political will and do what's right for us as Nigerians. I am Mariana Cohn. Have a good evening.